Hey, what's up everybody? So in this video, I'm gonna be adding in dynamic room names to my voice calling app, and this is using Agora RTM and RTC. So what we have here is our simple voice calling app. If I join here, users can talk to each other. It just transmits that audio data. Uh, the only issue we have right now is we can only join one room. There's no way to customize my room name. And if we go back into our code here, we just have a room ID here with the name of main and this gets set for our RTM client here when we create our channel we have our room ID and for our RTC client when we set that so we want to make that dynamic we're going to add a form field here and all we're going to do is update some HTML give that new field or put that new field here and then extract that value so for anybody that's not part of this video series, uh, our source code is linked up in the video description, so check that out. And you will want to jump into folder number six here if you want the exact code for where we're at right now. So let's go ahead and click on this. And inside of this folder, we have a file called guide.md. This is just a written guide. So let's just go ahead and take a look at what we have and start building this out. So first thing we're gonna do is go ahead and modify our form here. We're just gonna add a little wrapper here to add some more styling, we'll add some labels, and we're just gonna add in the room name field here. So let's actually just copy all of this right here and we'll go back into our index.html file. So we'll go into our form here. So right now we have two input fields. So let's go ahead and actually, uh, you know what, I'll just code this out. So we'll go ahead and create a new div. We'll actually just hand code it so that way you can see everything. And we're just gonna create a wrapper around all our input fields. Let's give this an ID and this is gonna be form-fields. Now the next thing we're gonna do is go ahead and copy this display name input field. We're gonna paste that and we're gonna change the value here. So we're just gonna change this to room name. So room name is gonna be the value, placeholder will be enter room name. And we just wanna add some labels, make sure it's also required because we don't want a user to go into a room without a name or without a room name. So we'll just add in a label here real quick throw that in and this will be display name. And the next one here will just be room name. Okay, so fairly simple here. Uh, it's all we're adding for the form field itself. We have that class and we should be ready to move on to the next section. So both of those are required. And now what we wanna do is go ahead and in that enter room function, this is the function that gets triggered when we submit that form. We just wanna go ahead and get our room ID value and set it to whatever was in that specific form field. So we also wanna go ahead and reset that room ID value. So we'll go back to the top of our main.js file and let's just go ahead and initialize this, but we'll leave it as undefined. So before we initialize RTM or RTC, we call the enter room method. So again, on submit form, we call it. Well, let's just go ahead and get our room ID and we'll set this to the value of e.target.room name or yeah, room name, not ID. e.target.room name. Let's see what's going on here. Why isn't it auto filling for me? Room name dot value dot lowercase. And I just want to make sure that that's what I called it here. So room name. Okay, so we're just getting this value and then we're calling dot value and then we're just gonna do two lowercase we just want to make sure that that room name is automatically set to lowercase so let me just copy and paste this for some reason i'm just not trusting the input that i'm typing here so let's see we'll copy and paste that yeah it looked correct to me so we're just getting that room id and we're setting it and then when we call init, init rtc and init rtm that room id will now be dynamic so we'll go back to our guide let's see what we have here so we set that value and then when we enter we should be good to go. Okay, so let's test this out real quick. So now if I go back to my code here, let's just enter the room or we'll enter my display name. We'll just do Dennis and we'll just say test one. So if I enter this room, I should be able to join with another user. So we'll just go ahead and enter this in. We'll do Sulamita test one. And let's just go ahead and join this room. So now we're both in the same room. So if I go ahead and join with Solomitha into test two, we're gonna be in our own room. So now we see that this user does not see Solomitha and Solomitha does not see Dennis here. So we're in two different rooms and then I can always jump back into that room with the name of test one. Okay, so that's working, that's perfect. Now the next thing I wanna do is make sure that anytime I'm in a room, let's say we're in a call with a bunch of people and I want someone to join, 
And let's just say we have some complicated room name. We generated this randomly. It's some random string of characters. Well, it'd be nice to be able to just copy the URL and pass this to another user and then have them enter that and then have that room name set by default in their form here. So like if I go ahead and refresh this, if my URL said something like room and then we'll just do equals to test one and I'll try to zoom in here because I know that's very small. So I wanna do something like this where we can set that room name right there and then pass that along and then have that submit or enter prefill the form field. So let's do that. So we'll go back to our guide here and how we wanna do this is when we set that room name and hit enter, we wanna go ahead and call history window.history.replace state and this gives us different things that we can update. We're not gonna go into this method here but we can actually set that last value of the room and that last parameter here into our URL. So it actually updates the URL. So let's go ahead and do that. So as we create the room name, we'll just recap it. We go into window.history.replace state, and then these two will be null for now, and then we call it room, and then we're just gonna go ahead and pass in room ID right there. So that's gonna be the actual room name. So let me show you what happens here. So if I go ahead and enter my name, we'll do Dennis, and we'll just call this uh, test one, when I hit enter, that automatically sets that URL to be room equals to test one. So that's our room name. So that's exactly what I wanted to happen. Now, the next thing I want is to be able to take this room name and pass it on to another user and have that pre-fill that form field. So I want to get that room, that room name field value from the URL. So let's go ahead and see how we do that. Let's bring this down here. So we're gonna call this method here called get room ID. And all it's gonna do is when we load our room or our, our room first in the, in the first case, what we're gonna do is we're first gonna check if this value exists in the URL. So we're gonna go ahead and get those, uh, those query parameters. And we're gonna try to find something by the name of room. And if it exists, we'll set it. If it doesn't, we'll just set the room ID to null. So let's go ahead and do this. We'll go ahead and write this out. Give me a second and we'll build out this method. So we're gonna put this above right here. So we have our room ID. So if we have a room ID, we want to preset this value. So let's just go ahead and call const get room ID. And we wanna be able to get this from the URL parameters. So first thing is, is we'll just go ahead and call const and this will be the query string. And we're just gonna go ahead and get some values out of it. So window.location.search and I shouldn't call const equals. Okay, so we have our query string, then we want the actual URL parameters, so we wanna extract those, and this will be URL params. And this is just gonna be new, and we'll just call URL search params. And we're just gonna throw in our query string here. So we'll throw that in here, and the next thing we're gonna do is go ahead and check if this exists. So we'll just say, if URL params dot get, so we wanna be able to get the value of room. So if this exists, then let's just go ahead and return this value to the room ID value here. So we'll just call URL params dot get, and we'll get the room value. That'll be a string. And we just wanna set this to lowercase, to lowercase like that. So we wanna just go ahead and return that value else. This value will just be null. So let's just go ahead and set this right here. So it's either that URL parameter or it's gonna be null. So we can go ahead and check that. Okay, so that's if the value exists in the URL. So what we wanna do next is, uh, let's see, let's actually read this. So if that value exists, what I wanna do is go to that form field and actually set it right away. So we'll just go ahead and just underneath our room ID, we wanna preset that form field value. So we'll do document dot get element by ID and we're gonna get the form and we're just gonna go ahead and get the room name value. The value here is gonna be set to the room ID, which is gonna be either null or what's inside of our URL. And I wanna make sure I did that right. So yeah, we get the room name dot value and then the room ID. Okay, so let's go ahead and test this. If I open this up here, uh, let's just go ahead and restart this. So we'll just call this room devrel. So that stands for developer relations. I'll just throw in my name, we'll hit enter. So the room URL is set, right? 
So now if I pass this along to another user, let's go ahead and copy this. If I pass this along, notice that this input field is pre-filled already. So the user doesn't have to go try to find that room. I just share the URL with them. They can find it and then they can enter this. So we'll just go ahead and add in Sulamita. When she enters, now she sees the room. So we just pass it along with a URL and that's how we can set that room name. And that's gonna be it for this video. So in the next video, we're gonna take care of displaying user avatars. So we can actually uh, see some avatars or profile pictures instead of just seeing our username. So I'll see you all in the next video.